An alarming study came out earlier this year that examined micro and nanoplastic concentration levels in canines and human testicles. And the results of this study are quite alarming. The researchers found microplastics in every single subject of this study, both humans and canine. Furthermore, the average amount of microplastics found in the testicles of human subjects was three times higher than those found in canines. The the presence of microplastics in the human body can disrupt hormonal signaling and lower sperm count and motility. This can ultimately lead to issues like decreased sperm quality, reduced testosterone levels, and even fertility issues. However, there was a significant degree of variability, meaning that some subjects had higher levels of microplastics in their balls, and others had lower levels. So in this video, I'm going to give you some practical tips to help you get as many of those microplastics out of your balls as possible, and keep them out so that you can be healthy and thrive as a man. But before I dive in, I want to preface the video by saying that as of this recording, number one, I am in part-time graduate school, number two, I work full-time, number three, I coach multiple clients, and number four, I also practice what I preach when it comes to this health stuff. And as a consequence, I don't have time to do all the fancy retention video editing. You are going to get a lot out of this video if you pay attention, and I would even encourage you to take notes. But if you need all the pattern interruptions and the sound effects and the memes and the b-roll footage to stay engaged and pay attention then you should probably just go watch mr beast or something because this content is not for you if you're new here my name is ben richardson i'm a personal trainer a certified nutrition coach and a chemical engineer for years i suffered from low testosterone levels in my early 20s and it took going through a pretty nasty breakup for me to get my life back on track so I'm here to share what I've learned since then with other men so that they can increase their testosterone levels naturally just like I did. And I do post weekly, so make sure you subscribe so that you're not missing out. Something that you need to understand about plastics is that all plastics are sensitive to breaking down into microplastics, especially when they're exposed to heat and specific wavelengths of light, also known as electromagnetic radiation. Plastics are polymeric materials with long molecule chains created through unique chemical processes called polymerization. Polymerization is a process that adds individual building block molecules onto the overall polymer molecule chain. So think of a chain as the overall polymer molecule and then the individual rings of the chain as the building blocks. That's kind of a good way to think of things. After the polymerization process, the polymer molecules are still sensitive to heat and light. This is why drinking bottled water that's been sitting out in your car on a hot summer day is not a good idea. And recently, something that has actually driven me up the wall is when men sit in the sauna drinking water out of plastic water bottles. In both these cases, the heat breaks down the plastic which leaches right into the water that you're drinking. Heat breaks the bonds of long polymer chains and generates free radical compounds. And free radicals are highly reactive and extremely unstable. So they'll react with whatever they can in their path to reach a more stable energy state. And this is why free radicals are carcinogenic. They readily disrupt cellular functioning. Anyways, I don't want to get too into polymer chemistry, but it's good to know why all plastics are sensitive to light and heat. So, some practical tips to reduce your exposure to these endocrine disrupting chemicals and plastics. Don't store your food in plastic containers or plastic bags. Replace plastic containers with metal or glass containers. Try to avoid using plastic bags whenever you can. Throw out your Tupperware and get some kind of metal or glass food container instead. I recommend transferring produce that comes in plastic packaging into a metal or glass food container. So, for example, if you buy meat that's packaged in plastic, I would just move it right into a glass or metal container when you get home from the store. Plastics are also used to line canned goods, so try to avoid purchasing canned goods and opt for purchasing fresh produce instead. A little hack for you is to stop throwing away any glass jars or bottles that you buy at the store. I used to buy kombucha that came in these glass bottles and I would just wash and reuse them and then store things like orange juice or pomegranate juice because those things were sold in plastic bottles 
bottles, so I would just transfer them into the glass bottles. Always keep mason jars if you buy salsa or some kind of sauce that comes in a jar. Pickle jars are also really good to keep. Heck, you can actually stuff ground beef in there. So real quick, if you're finding this video valuable and informative, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button real quick. It helps me out, which helps other men out because men need to be aware of how these materials affect their hormonal health. Replace all your plastic cooking utensils with wooden or metal ones also. Get rid of any of those plastic or rubber-like spatulas and use wooden or metal ones instead. When you cook with those things, you break down the plastic material when you use it to flip or mix your food or whatever the heck you're doing with it. You are exposing it to heat when you're cooking, which breaks down the material into microplastics that permeate right into the food that you're about to eat. The same is true for coated nonstick pots and pans. Most of them have a polymer-like material like Teflon integrated into the coating, which breaks down into microplastics over time after repeatedly heating them up to cook and then cooling them back down. Guess where some of those microplastics are gonna go? Right into the food that you cook in the pot or the pan. Many chemical cleaners contain chemicals that are also harmful to your skin and your lungs. Things like laundry detergent, dish soap, disinfectant, spray, bleach solutions, cleaners that contain ammonia, car cleaning chemicals, surface treatment chemicals, stain removers, and odor removers. Although using these chemicals is not necessarily bad, you should just take some precautions when you handle them. I would wear gloves if you know that you're likely to make direct skin contact with them. Make sure you air out the room or the space that you're going to use them in so that the volatiles aren't just floating around in the air that you're breathing. Various hygiene products can also contain endocrine disrupting chemicals as well. Things like highly processed soaps, shampoos, conditioners, lotions, fragrances, colognes, perfumes, body sprays, deodorants, shaving creams, and makeup. Antiperspirant deodorants are probably among the worst products that you can apply to your skin. The problem is that your pores get blocked from sweat exiting your body, and sweating is one of the ways that your body actually gets rid of toxins. That's why sitting in the sauna is so good for your health and your skin. Just make sure that you don't sip on water out of a plastic bottle like I talked about earlier. If you use antiperspirant deodorant, you prevent your body from expelling toxins through sweat. So opt for an all-natural deodorant and definitely avoid antiperspirant deodorant. In fact, you want to opt for all-natural products to use on your skin in general. Consider reducing the amount of different hygiene products that you use as well. Honestly, really all you need is some good quality soap to wash your body with, some natural deodorant to keep yourself from smelling like crap, and some shampoo to wash your hair like once or twice a week. That's it. I personally get really nerdy about the soap thing. I'm actually a big fan of just making my own soap. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I'm a chemical engineer, so I can't help but get a little geeky about it. But you don't have to be super nerdy like me. You can go to the store and find good quality soaps, shampoos, and deodorants. Farmers markets are also great places to find all natural hygiene products as well. Just pay attention to the list of ingredients on the products that you're buying. Try to dwindle that list of ingredients down if you can, and you should be able to pronounce the names of the ingredients in the product. That's a nice little general rule of thumb with this. If you want to put something in your hair, you can use coconut oil. I don't use any hair products at all. I just put coconut oil in my hair to style it. You really don't need to buy all these fancy skincare products to take good care of your skin. If you simplify your life and the products that you use, your body will respond well to it. Every YouTuber and their hamster is sponsored by Tiege Hanley, and they all tell you how their skincare products are essential for taking good care of your skin, but you don't need need any of that crap. And by the way, feel free to chime in here if you have tips, please. Blast the comments section down below. These materials are destroying our health, so let's brainstorm even more ways to cut back on them so that we can all be healthy. Fragrance products like colognes, perfumes, and body sprays usually contain endocrine disruptors called phthalates, which are plasticizing agents. Now, because these fragrance products are high in synthetic chemicals that do not occur naturally by 
by the way, I suggest eliminating their use altogether. Colognes and perfumes can be very expensive too, so you're gonna save money here. But if you're not gonna listen to me here and you're gonna use them anyway, then at least spray them on the outside of your clothes and don't spray them directly on your skin. Okay, let's move on to the next general category of endocrine disruptors. From good old chemistry 101, we know that fluorine, chlorine, and bromine all react similarly to iodine because they are located in the same column of the periodic table. These elements are known as the halogen. Iodine regulates thyroid hormone production, directly affecting metabolic health and hormonal output. And when other halogens are introduced into the body, they displace iodine and downregulate thyroid hormone production, which slows metabolic function. And a slow metabolism means less than optimal hormonal balance. Fluorine is extremely common in tap water because the government adds it to most public water systems to enhance dental health. And although fluorine does help strengthen teeth and enamel durability, ingesting it is quite harmful to the body. Fluorine is also present in most dental products such as toothpaste and mouthwash. And its presence is the sole reason that dental product companies must have a do not swallow warning on the label. Ingesting fluoride is very harmful, but using fluorinated dental products that you do not swallow is probably okay. I personally don't use them, but again, I'm kind of a freak when it comes to this kind of stuff. Fluorine and chlorine are abundant in most U.S. public water systems, so never drink water straight out of the faucet. I recommend filtering the water that you drink as best as you can. Something is better than nothing, but your best option is to get some kind of reverse osmosis water filtration system installed into your house's plumbing system. Reverse osmosis filters are the best at removing harmful chemicals from the water. And this might sound extreme, but you use water for a lot of other things besides drinking. You frequently shower and bathe and wash your hands, and your skin absorbs chlorine and fluorine quite readily. In fact, if you submerged your hand in a small bucket of pool water for about 60 seconds, your skin would absorb about 95% of the chlorine in it. So filtering all the water in your living space will make a massive difference over the course of weeks, months, and years. Also, keep water quality in mind whenever you go out to restaurants and order water. I do usually order water because it's free, but I usually don't drink it either. Chlorine is also prevalent in public swimming pools to eliminate urine waste. Little fun fact for you, that notorious pool smell that you smell is actually a compound called chloramine, which is the product of chlorine reacting with urea. And for those of you who are not aware, urea is the main component in urine. When it comes to bromine, bromine is most commonly found in fungicides, insecticides, herbicides, and pesticides. These chemicals are sprayed on crops to keep the produce intact, and they do work very well, but they also permeate into the crops, which are then consumed by humans. The best way to avoid these endocrine disrupting chemicals is to either start purchasing organic produce or at the very minimum start washing your produce before you eat it. You pay extra for organic food because of what it does not have on or in it. Organic food doesn't necessarily have more nutrients but it is worth the investment because it eliminates these unnecessary endocrine disrupting chemicals from your diet. Organic food is healthier for your body's hormonal system because it doesn't contain all those harmful synthetic chemicals. Your endocrine system will thank you for easing off on all the toxins that it has to filter out of your body. So eliminating these dietary stressors will ultimately improve your hormonal balance. A little tip for offsetting the additional expenses of purchasing organic food is to stop eating out so much and start investing the difference that you save in organic produce. So just limit the number of times that you go out to eat per week and use that money to purchase higher quality foods from the store. I've made a few videos about how restaurant food is junk food even though most people think of sweets, snacks, and soda as junk food. Restaurants use low quality ingredients in the menu items that they make because they're trying to make as much money as they can. And they're not necessarily evil for doing this because that's just how they effectively run their business to make money. But the honest truth boils down to if a restaurant can make more money using $2 cheap oil to cook food in versus $10 high quality oil to cook food in, they're probably gonna choose the $2 oil versus the $10. Farmers markets are again a great place to find affordable, high quality, fresh produce. Local farms are the best because you can actually ask 
ask the farmers about their production process. So things like how they raise their animals, how they grow their produce, what chemicals they do or don't use. Unfortunately, it's nearly impossible to completely avoid endocrine disruptors because they really do plague our entire planet. Manufacturers have been using these chemicals for decades now, and it was only a matter of time before their negative impact started to take hold. But following the tips and tricks from this video will do wonders for your health, especially if you implement each and every tip simultaneously. Now, purging these materials is a great way to increase your testosterone levels, but you also need to incorporate habits into your life that are going to maximize your testosterone potential. So if you need some tips on that, then I would check out this video on daily habits to boost your testosterone. If you need even more support and accountability to hit your goals, then I would head on down to the link below in the pinned comment and go ahead and apply for my coaching program. I can help you replace all of your bad habits with good ones that'll help you increase your testosterone levels so that you can feel like a freaking beast of a man. Increasing your testosterone levels is going to give you more energy, more confidence, more masculine drive, and really bring back that mojo that you felt when you were younger. It really is the key to unlocking that raw masculine vitality that is embedded in your DNA as a man. So if you're interested, then fill out the form below by heading to that link in the pinned comment. It only takes like one or two minutes. And I'll reach out to set up a quick Zoom call so that we can chat about how I can help. So I hope to hear from you soon. But that's all for this video. If you liked it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And again, if you're new here and you've made it this far, then make sure you subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you thought about the video down in the comments below. I always love hearing from you guys. And it helps me make the kind of content that you want to see when I I hear from you directly, so don't be a stranger. If you made it to the end, I do appreciate the support, and I hope you got a ton out of this video as well. Good luck in all of your efforts to boost your testosterone levels naturally. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.